If you're getting sick several hours after eating red meat, it could be that you've developed the alpha gal meat allergy. And it happens all of a sudden, right? Like you love red meat, but then all of a sudden you start getting sick. It's very strange. This is unbelievable. The allergy is linked to tick bites from the Lone Star Tick, a tick that's found here in the tri-state area. Many doctors may not even know about this, so now the CDC is issuing a warning. So Dr. Erin McGinty is an allergist affiliated with Stony Brook Southampton Hospital and estimates she's treated about 900 patients for this allergy in the past dozen years or so. Unbelievable. Dr. Welcome, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Do you, think, morning. do you think there are a considerable number of people who may be suffering from this and actually don't even realize that they have it? I think that it's a very different allergy. So for sure, it doesn't present like most food allergies where you see symptoms immediately after eating the food. So these allergic reactions are delayed by somewhere between three and eight hours. So certainly, if you're not aware that this allergy exists, you might not even make the association that the symptoms are due to something that you ate, you know, six hours prior. See, that's really interesting. I know you're gonna think I'm crazy, but we've been saying that this has been in existence or you've been familiar with it for the last dozen years or so. I actually think I may have something similar because I have a weird allergy to eating red meat, so I stopped eating red meat. So you talked about some of the symptoms. It's not immediate. What, what are the other symptoms you might have? So it's, it's interesting because it does present like an allergic reaction with typical allergy symptoms, including hives, chest tightness, shortness of breath, gastrointestinal symptoms are particularly prominent with this condition. So patients may experience cramping, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and a subset of patients may only have the gastrointestinal symptoms, but it happens delayed. So you would eat a hamburger for dinner. That's the typical story. You eat a hamburger for dinner and you wake up at midnight, itching, hives, cramping, vomiting. And in very severe cases, you could have a full anaphylactic event. Wow. Tell us about the timing of the onset of these symptoms. So like what you just said, when would you have to have had the tick bite? Like, could you figure out that it could be from a tick if you time it out like, oh, a month ago I was in the woods and then this is what happened. Yeah, it is definitely, we definitely see more cases in the spring, summer and fall when tick bites are common out here uh, on the east end of Long Island. So the most typical story is that patients start experiencing symptoms within, I'd say two weeks to a month of having experienced Lone Star tick bite or multiple Lone Star tick bites. And then once you get this, it's for how long? Is it prolonged? Does it, does it go away, this allergy? So we don't have a cure for this allergy, but the good news is we do know that the longer you can go without getting a new Lone Star tick bite, the better the allergy gets. So it is possible for this allergy to go away, uh, provided you can avoid new Lone Star tick bites, which can be very tricky if you live in an area where this tick is common. Do we know why it's meat? And what about like cheese or dairy, other animal products? So this alpha gal, which is the nickname for galactose alpha 1,3 galactose is a carbohydrate that's expressed widely throughout cells of all non-primate mammals. So humans, apes, monkeys, we don't have it, but all other mammals, including cats and dogs and horses and even mammals that we don't eat, it's just part of their genetic makeup and we've been ingesting alpha-gal our entire life. But when someone gets a lone star tick bite and they're a person who's predisposed to develop this allergy, they start making antibodies, allergy antibodies called IgE that actually recognize this alpha-gal in meat. And it is in um, other meat byproducts, gelatin and dairy. So it is possible to have reactions to these Mm -hmm. byproduct food, but that's, I would say that's the exception rather than the rule. The majority of my patients can tolerate dairy in moderate amounts without significant issue. So how do you get, get diagnosed for this then? So you have to have a good index of suspicion. If anyone who lives in an area that's endemic for Lone Star ticks, which for sure in the New York area is uh, Eastern Suffolk County, it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue. If you live in an area endemic for Lone Star ticks and you start noticing unusual allergic reactions, they often happen in the middle of the night because people tend to eat their biggest meat meal mm -hmm. for dinner. So if you're waking up in the night having unusual 
symptoms, hives, itching, abdominal symptoms, uh, and as particularly if you notice that it's only happening after you've eaten meat, the best thing to do is, is really seek out uh, an allergy and immunology specialist. A lot of people think because it's a tick bite, you should go see an infectious disease doctor, yeah. but this is not an infection, it's a food allergy. So you're going to be best served by seeing an allergy specialist who can help you tease this out. There's a blood test that's very reliable that can confirm whether you have the allergy. Um, it's also possible to have a false positive oh. test. So I, I don't really recommend that everyone who's ever had a Lone Star tick bite run and get this test because it, you're probably going to see more positive tests than you will see people who are actually allergic to meat. So having symptoms, seek out an allergist who has experience treating and diagnosing this disorder, and they can talk you through it and, and, and give you some good advice about how to take care of yourself. I have a fear of ticks. I'm constantly checking the kids after they play outside. <laughs> yeah. So does, is there any correlation with this allergy and Lyme disease? Not a direct correlation. It's just that the, the Lone Star tick is believed to be the primary, if not the only tick that causes this allergy. Lyme disease is caused by the black-legged tick or the deer tick, but they do coexist in very similar areas. So someone who's had Lyme disease is probably someone who engages in risky behaviors for uh, getting tick bites. Yes. So we see them co coexisting a lot, but I always reassure my patients that if they have a black-legged tick, be concerned for Lyme disease, but that tick we don't believe will give them this food allergy. Okay. Well, Dr. Erin McGinty, thanks so much for joining us this morning. It's really interesting information you shared with us. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me.